Hi, I'm Charlie Monto Tuyello with Blue Bear Flutes. Of course, our website, bluebearflutes.com, where you'll find some of the greatest and latest Native American flutes. Um, today's video is week number five of our 12 week Native American flute beginning to intermediate level flute playing class. Of course, if you're an advanced flute player, you might find something of benefit in this. And if you've been playing the Native American flute like I had for some years before you even dreamed of learning to play other scales on it, this might be a good one for you. And if you're not interested in playing other scales, to be honest with you, um, I don't like just sitting around playing music in Baroque or in uh, the, the uh, tonic major scale of your flute. But uh, having said that, the uh, extra notes might come in handy. So it's really not a bad idea. And it's also a good opportunity for you to practice uh, exercising your musical skills. And if those musical skills are only for playing the Native American flute and only playing Native American flute type music, you still might find some value in this because this is, uh, it's kind of, you know, the notes are still on your flute. It's not a question of whether or not your flute can produce the notes. It's a question of when and where and how and why and all that kind of thing that you would want to do with those notes. So, as you'll recall, our last week's class was Parts Unknown, which was uh, a really fun way to write your own song. And really the, the best part of writing your own music, especially using that random generated note, is uh, exercising your, your technique and your skills and, and really learning how to place the notes that you have already. So that's, a, that's a, an important part of any musician's career and life, in my opinion. Having said that, the next couple of weeks we'll still be going over a few alternative scales. The next one is kind of near and dear to my heart. That's the blues scale. It is my absolute favorite. It is, in some cases, it has been people's reason for living. So <laughs> I'll tell you, playing the blues on the Native American flute just kind of, it's like pancakes and syrup. You know, you really, uh, you find a lot of use in that. And it's, it's a simple thing too, because with the blues, the typical pentatonic blues scale, uh, minor pentatonic blues scale is only one extra note than the regular scale that we've gone over, which we go over, of course, in every class. Um, but uh, it's only one extra note. I might even show it to you today just because I'm so excited for next week's class. But uh, anyway, the major scale is very useful, and you'll find some use in it even with the blues, which we'll talk about next week's class as well, because there are certain notes that are more blue, <laughs> if you would, than others. Uh, we'll also get into um, the chromatic scale, which is probably the, the trickiest one to learn because it's the most notes, I guess you'd say. And uh, every Native American flute has a potential to play the chromatic scale as long as it's got at least four holes, it'll play the chromatic scale. In recent times, I've made Native American flutes that only have a couple of holes that, that play uh, most of the minor scale, some of the major scale, but it still, like I say, it depends on how, how advanced you want your flute playing to sound. Uh, having said that, like I said, the next few lessons are about alternative scales, today's being the major, and a major scale is basically um, starting on one bass note, playing each note uh, in between uh, in the tonic major of your flute. Your flute may be in a specific tonic major uh, key based on what minor key it is, and please look for our reference material on this on the online class page for more information. But if you look at the flute, basically whatever note is a second note of your flute, like when you have all holes covered and then uncover that first hole, that note is gonna be what major tonic that your flute will play in. And it'll play the entire major scale. And it doesn't matter if you have a modern six hole flute that requires you to keep this finger covered all the time, as I've said in my other classes for our lessons, you can just pretend that fingering doesn't exist it's only good for playing one note most of the time. Some people find a use in playing your flute in mode one and mode two, which is not really quite the Native American way of doing things. So, um, and we didn't play the major scale, by the way, typically. I mean, we might have used some extra notes uh, from different scales, but typically we don't use, you know, particulars of, of uh, these other uh, scales that came around via Pythagoras. So. All that aside, if you have a modern six hole flute for every lesson that we have on our 12 week course, please just keep that fingering covered. You're welcome to put a piece of tape up there. You can tie a piece of leather on it or whatever you have to do. Just keep that fingering covered. And you'll know you have a modern six hole Native American flute if you start playing. And it 
sounds like that. I'm not quite sure exactly what that's supposed to do. That's if you keep that hole covered up. I do have videos on my YouTube channel and on our website that show you the difference between the modern six hole flute and the original six hole flute, which sounds like our other flutes and like this one does when you keep your finger covered in that hole. It just has another note in the scale that is actually intended to be in the scale. So that having been said, let's get started with the first thing we need to do. If you haven't picked up on our lessons before, this is uh, basically the beginning of each and every lesson and it's a habit that you need to get into to practice good, uh, reliable techniques and become a great flute player, in my opinion. Now, you may find another way. Uh, might be a lot of flute players out there that have been playing for a while, scratching their head, thinking, I never did that. This is what works, and, and I'll tell you a couple of reasons why. So pick up your flute, place your fingers on the holes, take your fingers off the holes. Leave your fingers close to the position so that it's easy enough for them to go back. And if you notice, when I slid this hand back, my middle finger here has a tendency to try to feel where that hole is. That's simply because different size flutes have different size spacings between their fingerings. And if you're used to playing one or the other, you tend to find yourself covering that hole up differently. So because they're either closer together, further apart, or what have you. And in practicing playing the Native American flute and the technique that I'm showing you here and have been these last several lessons and for the next, um, you'll develop a habit that'll help you whether you're playing a tiny flute or a large flute or something in the middle or something you've never ever picked up before. If you do it this way, it'll really help you uh, get the hang of it. So having said that, pick up your flute, place your fingers on the holes, feel where the fingerings are. That's so important. Don't clamp down too tight that you can't play it and don't cover the holes so lightly that it's like you're uh, trying to have it levitate there against your hand. So. Cover the holes so that you can feel the fingerings under each pad of your finger. If you can't feel the fingerings, if you have a physical disability that makes it where you can't feel those fingerings, I've been hit by lightning twice. There's been times in my life my sensations haven't been as, as uh, articulate as they are today or as dactyl as they are today. So if you can't feel the fingerings, look and see if you can see that all the holes are covered up thoroughly and that'll help you. It also helps to practice in front of a mirror. That way you can look at your fingerings while you're playing. So pick up a flute. Before you even put it to your mouth, cover the holes. Make sure that you feel where the holes belong. Don't move your hands, only move your fingers. Play the top note. The top note is usually the easiest to play on any Native American flute and probably most any flute because it's all holes open. There are no mistakes that you can make with all holes open other than blowing too soft or too hard. Take a breath. Play the top note. While you're playing the top note, cover the next hole. That's what happens when you don't cover it all the way. See how I kind of slid into that last note? For a little while I've been playing a few other flutes and so even though this is one of my favorites it uh, hasn't been played as much lately and I find myself feeling where that hole is while I'm playing and some people might think hey that's a mistake but some of the uh, best techniques in the world come from mistakes. As a matter of fact most of them do. As I'm playing I'm going that's me starting the flow of air with my tip of my tongue. Kind of like you're going, today. Like saying the word today. So. And as you play that way, I'm actually starting the sound. We've talked about this in the first lesson. And I'm not stopping the sound. If this is the first time you've heard me talk about this, go back and watch lesson number one. And as you're practicing, it's always a good idea, especially if you're a beginner, to practice all the techniques that you know. If they're articulating techniques and tonguing or pronouncing techniques as I call them, or if they're breathing techniques or spacing techniques.
Week number two, we did a technique called the jumping bird technique. See that finger going there? That's uh, something in week number two that you can go back over that'll help you to practice and effectively master that technique. It's very easy. Um, so as you're playing the flute, like I said, think that you're performing for an audience. Don't think that playing the scale is your song. For some people, as I've said, that is their song. I'm uh, here to help you grow past that. The scale can be played very beautifully and very, I hate to say eloquently, but it can be done. <laughs> so keep in mind, that is not a song, that is the scale, but in essence, random notes. That was lesson number four. As I'm playing down the scale, all I did was improv a little bit. I went back up the scale and went back down the scale. Super easy stuff. Playing this instrument, I can't stress to you enough, is the easiest thing in the entire world. It is incredibly enriching, fulfilling. It is something that is good for you in so many levels. I can't stress enough. So, having said that, let's get to the specifics of playing the major scale. The major scale there again is when you uncover the first hole, any Native American flute, doesn't matter if it's a modern six hole flute uh, or if it's a traditional six hole flute. Um, as long as you keep the modern six hole flutes cover right here, it's basically a five hole flute is what it is in the first place. Some people will tell you that playing chromatically in the major scale is easier with this extra fingering. That is not true. This extra fingering only plays one note. That doesn't make anything easy. If you play something in mode one and mode two, maybe you'll find an extra use in it. There again, Still, you know, the major scale may not be a Native American idea. Mode 1 and Mode 2 just doesn't fit for me either. <laughs> the uh, extra fingering here only allows you that one extra note, and that one extra note is something you can play on any four, five, or six hole flute. So, uh, having said that, let's see what the major scale is going to sound like. I brought an extra flute with me today so that you can hear what it sounds like on two different flutes because it may sound slightly different on yours. If you have a flute that's not perfectly in tune, or if it's a little this or a little that, uh, you may find it takes a different fingering to play it all together. Not even related to this extra note or extra finger on the modern six hole flute. So watch what I'm doing here. First hole uncovered. It's gonna start us for our um, major tonic. And just to show you how to read that, we're gonna start right here. This is the major tonic scale. We're going to start right here and we have one, two, three, four holes covered, the bottom hole uncovered. Then we're going to uncover the bottom two. Then we're going to cover the second hole from the bottom and uncover the third and the first one at the bottom. Then we're going to uncover the bottom three, the bottom four, five. Then we're going to do some stuff here that's kind of unique that'll take some practice. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Very easy stuff. So. slid over that hole there again to make sure it came in tune. On a low tone flute, sometimes the major scale doesn't come out as articulate as it does with a higher tone flute. That's a low E and this is only one step higher, it's a F sharp. So. so now that you know what the major scale sounds like, sounds like you playing a recorder. Um, that is very easy to do. I'm going to show you step by step so that you can get the hang of it. You'll just need a little light practice uh, getting the first several notes. The last two notes is going to take some breath control. Like I said, we'll talk about that. If you find that it doesn't play perfectly on your flute after trying this technique a dozen or more times, uh, you may want to listen to the minor pentatonic scale and make sure that yours sounds like it has those kind of spacings. If something happens that your flute doesn't play those type of spacings, when I'm talking about spacings, I mean the distance in between the notes, not the notes themselves. Your flute may not sound like either of these. Maybe a very small high tone flute, maybe even be larger in a, a much lower tone flute. But uh, with the 
spacings of the notes, you can tell, you can recognize uh, the sound. And I mentioned this in my book, The Art of Native American Flute Making, um, the spacings of the notes and how they sound when you play them. So, that's what a minor pentatonic scale is supposed to sound like, which most Native American flutes are made in today. And like I said, I'm going to show you um, how to play this blues scale one note at a time. So first, uncover the first hole. Easy stuff. Uncover the next hole. Easy, easy, easy stuff. And then cover this hole, which is actually the note from our blues scale we'll learn next class. And then you uncover it. And those last two are just like playing the regular scale. And then you're going to cover the middle three holes on a five hole flute. If you're playing the modern six hole flute, like I said, keep that sucker covered all the time. Pretend it doesn't even exist. <laughs> and then you want to cover the middle three holes and that one. <laughs> so uh, when you're uh, playing this note, middle three holes partially cover the bottom hole. And you can tell if it's a correct, because when you're playing the scale, we recognize in modern culture today the major scale. The minor pentatonic scale is one that most indigenous cultures created naturally on their own since the beginning of music. And that is uh, something that, that we can see in, in most cultures, Native American and otherwise. But the minor pentatonic scale uh, has a certain sound to it, and you recognize it. That's why you enjoy playing this instrument, by the way. You recognize it on a deep cultural and maybe many other levels, but certainly all peoples of the world have played minor pentatonic instruments back in the day before Pythagoras come to show us how to play the major and chromatic and everything else skill. So as you're playing the major scale, you recognize the sound of it. Once again, if you're in modern culture today, if you're able to see this on a device, chances are you've heard the modern scale played or you listen to music that is played in the modern modern scale, the, the major scale. So as you play this first one of those last two notes that has a slash over it, that little slash in uh, most flute tablature means that it's a partial covered hole or there's something special going on there anyway. In my tablature it means it's a partial covered hole. So partially cover that hole. You can cover it a number of different ways, just as long as it's partially covered. You might find that it takes a different varying degree of partially covering that hole, or it may take more or less covering or more or less uncovering. So, and you can see that change. So going from the top of the scale, That sounds like a major scale, which is, it is, of course it is. Um, but I played the last note there, easy too, which really, it could be the first one we learn, but you still need to half cover that hole, so I always like to get the hardest things out of the way first. Covering the three middle fingerings uh, of a five hole flute, or like I said, if you've got a six hole flute, pretend that note's not even there, and just keep it covered all the time. This is the top note of that bottom note we started on. It's an octave above, just like is your top note of the octave of that bottom note on a Native American flute. This note usually is the octave of that note. If your flute plays a little odd, if it doesn't play these notes exactly on par, you can find where they are. And like I said, just a second, we're going to get into the very important part of what the scale is all about and how it's going to help you. So um, as you practice playing that partial cover note right there, you want to play it and then play the next note up above it so that you can uh, get a feel for the transition. Transitioning from playing any other note where you have to magically cover immediately three and a half holes is difficult. 
That is incredibly difficult. Even you watch me play, and I've been doing this for 30 some odd years, and it is is tricky. I mean, it takes practice. It's easy when you're sitting here and you say, oh, I'm gonna get my fingers ready for this. But when you're playing, it takes a little more practice and awareness of where your fingers are and where they're gonna go at that one instance that you need to play that one note. And like I said, after you get the hang of it, practice the scale, pause the video if you haven't gotten the hang of this uh, yet, or, or you can watch the video all the way through, which is probably what you're gonna to wanna to do anyway. And then when you get to the end of the video, go back and rewatch the part where we go over how to play this scale. Like I said, if it's the first time you've seen this or first time you've ever really gone and put some effort into trying to play the major scale, um, it's gonna take some practice. Don't expect it to happen overnight. It does take a little bit of practice. Chances are you can probably master it in an hour or two, but, but uh, like I said, you've really gotta put some effort into it to make that happen. Having said that, let's find when we're gonna use the notes from the major scale in Native American flute playing. You might say, I'll never use that. I'll show you where you can, and you'll find some great use in it. And the next two lessons, when we get to the chromatic scale, we'll talk about the uh, major transitions and the wash off. The wash off is something, um, if we were teaching a class specifically on blues, then I would talk to you about the wash off more then because that's what it, that's what the idea uh, develops from. But uh, but anyway, in the blues lesson, we'll talk specifically about the blues scale and playing that backing track. So we'll uh, get to that next time. <laughs> but in the meantime, I'm going to play some Native American flute music for you that is going to include notes from the tonic major scale. And you'll notice too, I guess before I even start, you'll notice if you see the standard scale here, not talking about this note, this is the extra note on a modern six hole flute that is, like I say, it, it represents one of the notes from the chromatic scale, but you don't need it for any of this. It's just in case you need to ask, how do you play that note? Um, but, uh, but anyway, these notes right here, you'll notice that all covered, uncover one, two, I mean, it's a basic scale. And then when we get here, I play the same note that you play over here on the tonic major scale. Um, that is actually in the minor pentatonic scale, believe it or not. So it's just kind of coincidence that uh, you can play it in both, and it's still it's still in the uh, the minor and it's in the major scale. Just like any of these other notes that are in the same, you know, they cross over. This dude right here, don't get it confused with that one right there. This is the second, third, fourth hole covered part of the last hole covered. This one is the second, third, excuse me, the second, third, and part of the fourth hole covered. So, like I say, it can get confusing. We'll talk about uh, that kind of thing. But uh, there again, this note here, I'll show you in just a moment, is not nearly related to this note here. As a matter of fact, this one is not in the minor pentatonic, not in the standard scale. This one here is, and I'll play it for you. But in the meantime, first thing we want to focus on is the major scale. And so now that you know what it sounds like, I have to pause because I really, I have a, like a mental block against playing the major scale on the Native American flute. And I know many of you probably have the same feeling. That's why I want to show you how you can use it. So just some random improv here. Those last two times I played that note right there, of course, that's the note from the blues scale over here. It's the actual most important one of the blues notes because it what's, it's what makes the minor pentatonic scale sound bluesy. There are other blues notes. That is one thing that we will talk about in uh, next week's lesson is the other blues notes. And you'll find some use in them uh, you'll find them actually from the chromatic, from the major scale. They're there, but you have to know how to play them. And like I said, when we talk about the chromatic scale, we'll talk about washing that off 
uh, and uh, what that means. It's a, like I said, it's a blues terminology, blues idea, but we'll get to that. So. have a tendency to play, to play those blues riffs in there in the right order. So, but anyway, um, so those are a couple of the notes that are in the major scale. The one other note that is in the major scale is a hard one to practice uh, when you're... See, what happens if you don't cover the hole all the way? Gotta practice. You'll find some use in this note. You will. So let's see what happens. You can do it. Is it necessary? Maybe not. The other two notes in the tonic major scale though might be something you want to think about. And let me now show you uh, the last note on my chart here for playing the standard Native American flute scale. That's just like right up the scale. Easy stuff. And then the next note is one we learned for the major scale. Easy stuff. And then you partially you slide your finger off this hole. So some flutes, those notes, and it has to do with the size of diameter of the flute, the spacing of the fingerings, sometimes those notes may not sound exactly the same. Like I had mentioned, playing the tonic major scale on a different flute, It doesn't sound like that note's as, as sharp as it really should be, and it's probably not. Uh, but playing the uh, Native American, standard Native American flute scale, you can see the usefulness of it. Even though uh, playing the major scale, it sounds a little flat on the Native American flute scale, because typically, as the minor scale grows, as you go up to the next octave, the next octave of notes are pinch flat. That's just the nature of, of you know, this is not really a, a, what do they call it, a um, standard amount of spacing. It's not equal spacing, equal temperament of the notes. Um, so as you go up the scale, it tends to go a little flat. And some flutes go a little more flat than others, based on the size usually, not always, but usually. And on a larger flute, typically, it's harder to play that next note in the scale. It takes less uncovering of the fingering. You have to uncover the fingering, but less than you would on a different flute, because it's a larger flute, probably has slightly larger holes. You're already letting more air out to begin with. As you're letting more air out of this hole, when you've got these fingers covered, you have to let a little bit less air out of this hole because there's already more coming out of this one. It kind of balances things out. Yeah, don't, <laughs> yeah, I hate to tell people don't ask why. Don't ponder it. I mean, ask why, by all means, figure it out. But, uh, but don't ponder, don't worry about it. It's nothing to, to be concerned with. Even in the time that I've been showing you on this, I've gotten so used to playing this flute 
And likewise, my uh, breath control, my fingerings, everything has changed. Um, even the embouchure, which typically on this flute, you don't have to have an embouchure. You can just put it to your mouth. But when I play this flute, whether it has an open mouth piece or a closed mouth piece, I tend to use some of the muscles in my mouth to help me control and regulate the speed of the air. So once again, a more advanced technique, something that you'll get pretty much on your own. find that the note repetitively doesn't sound good on your flute, don't play it. It's that easy. Uh, you know, it's it's a extra note in the scale. You can search out for new ways to play it too. Uh, don't get me wrong. You can find so many note combinations. I'm just giving you the basics here. You know, this is, uh, like I say, flute, flute Lessons 101. It's not how to play everything in the entire world under the sun on your flute. Keep in mind, your flute is as individual as you are. Even if it was mass produced by some company uh, overseas that makes billions of them or even some company here in the United States that makes billions of, of flutes. Um, if it's been mass produced and it seems like it's exactly like every other flute, one thing all flute makers say is no two flutes are exactly alike. And it's true, they, they tend to respond differently. Even if you do everything exactly the same, minor fluctuations in the hardness of the wood may cause some machining or tooling issues that made it a little bit different you know it's just a little bit different or say when the flute maker was finishing your flute even some of these large companies as long as they have quality control which i know the the best ones do not all the lower end flute mass production companies overseas you know that import into the united states or into your country or what have you uh, not all of those companies have great quality control uh, they, it depends on if they're focused on making you a wonderful instrument or making a lot of money it really depends on which one that and, and in today's consumerist society that, uh, that I grew up in, you know, I grew up in the 70s and 80s, uh, the 1970s and 80s, depending on when you're watching this video, but uh, I grew up in the 70s and 80s and uh, we were trained to be consumers. I've got jingles running through my head right now. Sometimes my wife and I will be driving along and I'll just, I'll start uh, singing one of them and, and it's just, it's catchy. You know, it's, it's what worked back in those days to convince us to buy, 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 spend. Um, but today it's a little trickier, at least in the 2020s, it's a little trickier to, to spot um, when you're being, I guess, I hate to say take, taken advantage of, but when you're being consumer is consumerized, that's a good word. Uh, so you hear me, Webster? Uh, anyway, when you're being consumerized today, you may not recognize what's going on. If there are people mass producing something, and they have little or any contact with you, and if you ask them a question, they don't have an answer, or their answer is kind of bland, um, you may be a victim of consumerism. You may be um, being sold a flute from a flute seller who bought it from a company who distributes flutes from a company that made them in another country altogether, and somewhere down the chain, the people that are making the flutes are getting about 50 cents not even really that, that'd be the company making the flutes. The people making the flutes are getting two, three cents an hour. The company is getting 50 cents an hour. Then they sell them to the company in the United States or, or whatever country that you're in. It's been happening more in the U.S. because we're where Native Americans come from. So, um, but uh, if you're buying a flute that is, uh, that is maybe $15 or even if it's $30, I have $30 flutes that we make. We make them by hand. Uh, and we make them in the shop all day long and we spend a lot of time checking our quality control to make sure they're proper. If something happens, your flute ain't right, basically, long story short, it may not play some of the notes. You may be able to find other ways to play those notes. I have on those cheap flutes that I've bought for other videos to demonstrate and show you imported flutes. Um, so you may be able to find ways to play those extra notes. They may not be made in the same modern Native American flute scale I'm talking about here. They might actually, I found some of the quote unquote cheap knockoffs actually were made traditional <laughs> flute tuning, which, you know, is the world's such a hodgepodge of ideas. But uh, I like to share that with you because you need to know where you're, where you're going, where you're coming from, what you've got, what you can do with it. And if you don't know what to do with it or don't know how to deal with it, you can find a way. You can. You really, really absolutely can. So, um, 
learning to place these extra notes in your music can be a little tricky. You may decide not to do it, and that's okay. But if somebody asks you to play for their wedding, now you have reference material that you can go back and look at, and you can say, this is how I play those notes, and you can practice playing the major scale, and when you get the hang of it, you can say, okay, I can play the wedding march. Or somebody wants you to play Amazing Grace, for example, which is primarily minor pentatonic, has maybe a note or two that aren't. And uh, that's another reason people say they like playing this modern six hole flute, because it's so easy to play Amazing Grace. Um, but you can play that on anything. You can. You can play it on anything with four holes or larger. We'll play minor, major, and chromatic. And for the most part, it's usually the same. Most everything is exactly the same. So you'll find a use in this. Uh, if you're playing along with your favorite cover song and you want to to get some of the notes and turn that cover song into a Native American flute song. Now, you found a reason. <laughs> I hope I've helped inspire some of you out there that found something interesting. Uh, some of the notes of your favorite, whoever, one of my favorite artists, Macklemore, uh, I like to, to play along with him. I do. Bobby McFerrin. I mean, <laughs> you can find anybody, great, great musicians in the world today. Uh, Jamiroquai, we listen to in the shop because a lot of his music's in funk, which is basically blues, which is basically minor pentatonic. There's so many places you can take this wonderful instrument, so many directions. So, once again, my name is Charlie Montotuyela. I hope that you found some use and I've helped inspire you to play this wonderful instrument a little bit more. If you don't think that the major scale's for you, it may not be, um, you may find some use in it. So know how to get to it, know how to, to use it if you need to. Uh, and then if you want to stretch those uh, uh, musical muscles and get some you know, techniques out that you've never thought you dreamed of, go ahead and play it. Find a way to play those notes and make it sound like Native American flute music, and you'll find that the world is a much smaller place. It really is. So uh, I hope you guys, like I said, have enjoyed this video. The next one is going to be the blue scale. After that, we've got the alternative scales, the chromatic. Uh, which is going to be the hardest one for anybody to learn, in my opinion. It's not very fun. It's not fun on any instrument. If it's not fun playing scales on an instrument, for the most part, I try to make it fun. Uh, and then we'll get into the traditional stories of the Native American flute and what is traditional. We'll talk about some of those things and talk about some other traditional stories. Um, wetting Out, Lesson 9, 10 is song number 3, the Blue Bear song. Everybody wants to play the song that's the beginning intro on our YouTube channel. Over the years, I've thought about changing it, and we've talked about that, and I think that'd be crazy. So I uh, have just started making other music videos and putting out other songs. So um, advanced techniques and performing for large crowds. You may not think you want to perform for large crowds, but the techniques you will learn in there, gosh, I've got so much. That second to last lesson uh, is, is so easy for me because I've performed a lot for other people, but that second to last lesson has got so many notes on my note paper I'm staring at right here what we'll go over because of what we're going to talk about. That is, even if you're just going to play for yourself or for your cats and dogs or out in the woods where nobody will hear you, you'll get so much out of that. I feel like you will. I really do. You know, and I, I hope my heart because that's, that's kind of like, that's where I started is performing for other people. When so few had ever heard of the Native American flute, I was a, one of the three or four people there playing it for them, you know, uh, in the world. So... Uh, having said all that, last one, recording your own music, may or may not be interested. I'll show you some use in it, so please start the video if you, know, if you uh, get to that direction and decide you want to at least check it out. It's uh, very worthwhile. It'll help you become a better flute player, in my opinion. It helped me. So, once again, Charlie Montatuyela signing out. I'll quit talking now. Y'all take care. Happy flute playing. I look forward to seeing you next lesson.